There is no doubt that video games are an incredible art form that we here at The Gamer spend a frankly insane amount of time with. Playing them, thinking about them, writing about them, it's kind of a thing for us. Which frankly got all of us thinking. You may not realize it, but video games are slowly, subtly changing the way your brain works, sometimes permanently. First, be sure to subscribe to The Gamer and click that little bell to join our notification squad and stay up to date with all of our great gaming content. Now without further ado, this is our list of three incredible ways video games are hacking your brain. Video games make you more creative. Look, if you can dig down to the very heart of it, every game is a puzzle. Yeah, sometimes the puzzle's as simple as use gun on Nazi, but no matter what game you play, you're going to be using your problem-solving abilities to tackle the latest challenge, beat the next boss, and advance through the game. Like tap dancing or underwater basket weaving, the more you solve problems, the better you get at it. Specifically, video games, especially puzzle games like Minecraft, Portal, and 3D strategy games like Homeworld, develop your capacity capacity for spatial reasoning. When you're building a giant fortress in Minecraft, you're exercising the same brain functions you use to draw connections between objects and concepts in the real world. That's not just good for solving Rubik's Cubes and building lava skull fortresses either. According to a study from the University of Vanderbilt, high spatial reasoning in children under the age of 13 is a strong predictor of future creative thinking. Kids who play Minecraft in early adolescence, in other words, are more likely to become creative and good problems problem solvers once they actually get older. There's a good reason why teacher resources like Scholastic offer whole sets of guidelines and tips about how to incorporate Minecraft into the classroom. Not only that, puzzle and spatial reasoning games are just plain fun to play. Kids stay engaged in a way they don't necessarily in a normal classroom setting, all while becoming better problem solvers and more creative thinkers. So bear that in mind next time someone says that all video games do for you is give you good hand-eye coordination and late nights with no sleep. You're learning for hours. I just gotta finish this last thing and then I'll, uh, I'll go to sleep after, I, I swear. How I Stopped Worrying and Learned to Love Strategy So you're starting up a game of Rainbow Six Siege and pick our beloved German gadgeteer Bandit. It'll be your job to use your car battery on steroids to fry all of the fancy gadgets that the attackers are going to try and use on you and your teammates. Only problem is, there's a lot of gadgets. But you're an experienced Siege player. You know some of the places people tend to come from, and you're confident you can get the drop on a couple of attackers and ruin their fancy toys. And then you get spotted. You've now entered a mind game so intense that over 40 million people play it, turning a first-person MOBA into a game of high-intensity speed chess. You know what your character can do, the enemy knows what you can do, you know that they know what you can do, and now you and them are locked in an if-you-do-this-I'll-do-that back and forth that can only end with one of you emerging victorious. High-level players will even take it one step further. When you tag an enemy player, it lets them know that they've been identified, so pros will rely on memory and communication telling their teammates what enemies they spot without giving themselves away. This ability to act on asymmetric information and think one step ahead is at the heart of a good competitive game, and it has uses outside gaming as well. Lawyers engage in the same kind of strategic thinking when constructing a case, and politicians use it to determine foreign policy. During the Cold War, both the United States and the Soviet Union had to be extremely good at reading each other's intentions, knowing that if either side slipped, it could lead to a world-ending nuclear war. Whether you want to be a good siege player or a good world leader, you need the same skill, getting into the head of your opponent and crafting your strategy around them. So next time you get outsmarted and killed playing siege, look on the bright side. It's not the end of the world. Game designers are psychic. Now I know what you're thinking. Hear me out. I don't mean that video game designers can literally read your mind. Not until the next firmware update for the Switch anyway, but they can put thoughts in your head without you even realizing they're doing it. Planting ideas in a player's mind isn't science fiction. It's the basis of good game design. And nobody does game design like Valve. Praise Kevin. <clears throat> if you've played Half-Life 2, and if you haven't, what are you doing? Stop this video right now. Go get it. I'm not kidding, it's 10 bucks, I'll wait. All right, now that you've done that, congratulations, you've been brainwashed. No, you're not going to assassinate the president, but you've learned exactly the lessons that Valve's designers have wanted you to learn without once telling you explicitly what they were. Just take this moment, for example. I could go on for days about this moment. If there is a better introduction to setting, character, and basic physics mechanics in modern gaming, tell me in the comments, because honestly, none come to mind. It's just 
just such a small, petty moment that establishes character, helps define civil protection, and lets Valve show off some of the kinds of small-scale physics the Source engine was capable of 14 years ago. You don't need a cutscene. You don't need tons of dialogue. You already know everything you need to know intuitively. See, one of the reasons that Half-Life 2 is still so incredible and immersive is the fact that there's no compass, no map, no little HUD telling you where to go next. Instead, Valve relies on visual cues, context, and even the placement of a light bulb to make it clear what you need to do next, subtly nudging your eyeline right where they need it, making you feel like you're in control even when you're as often as not following a bunch of frankly pretty linear hallways. At its very best, that's what great game design is. It's so intuitive that you just get it naturally, tricking yourself into thinking your thoughts are your own. In reality, you're no more in command of your mind than the head crab zombies are. I'm gonna let that sink in for a second. At the end of the day, all design is communication between designer and player, and Valve's communication is so good that it's actually unconscious. They really are in your head. But you already knew that, didn't you? Because Valve has conditioned you. So next time you feel nostalgic for a little crowbar and crossbow action, remember, Valve can see your thoughts. So there we have it, folks. Three ways that video games are subtly changing your thoughts. What kinds of ways have you found your own IRL thinking changed by a video game? Are there things we overlooked? Tell us in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to The Gamer to stay up to date with all things gaming. We'll see you next time.